Shalom and welcome to another weekly Bible studies. We continue to rightly divide the word, the truth. There again, I'd like to welcome all of the those that have been viewing the videos past, present, and Lord willing in the future, especially for those that are studying uh, their scripture, uh, looking up definitions uh, when they uh, go over the words or go over the verses so that they comprehend and actually know there's a, the Greek word there to understand means mentally be able to put it together because we're commanded uh, people the word of God uh, all those you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the name of the Lord Jesus Christ from the beginning was the word and that's what's revealed in Revelation 19:13. it says no man or woman knew his name for his name is called the word of God now that's why when I put a video up a while back uh, blessed are those that are called to the marriage supper of the lamb everybody wants to think that we're the bride of Christ no we are being conformed to the son's image or we are the body of Christ we are the ones called to the marriage supper of the lamb Israel is the wife, that's the 144,000, that's the first fruits, that's the right sheet, and that's who he resurrected after his resurrection. Uh, those were the uh, 12,000 from each tribe, starting from in the order of uh, Reuben through Benjamin. Uh, so, uh, excuse me, Judah through Benjamin. Reuben was the second 12,000, uh, uh, Judah was first. 12,000 seals. So, very, very important. There again, his name is the word of God for those that are called because people. That's why we call upon his name. We call upon his name for he is the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, John reveals, and the word was in God. In other words, and the Spirit. So, so that's how when John start, starts out, uh, Apostle John, uh, verse 1, ch uh, chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, with the Spirit, and was in the Spirit. So when Christ was the Word made flesh, his name was Yahshua, Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, of course, that was his name. But in the, in the revealing of Christ in the book of Revelation, there again, why, why do you think that, that John or his pen, that no man, oh dice, that uh, you really need to look that word up and see how it's used through scripture. It's an absolute negative, but it, it means no woman, man, even not any woman, man. In other words, uh, there again, did it say the body of Christ didn't know his name? No, it didn't, because we do know his name. See? But no, when he comes back, it says, and no man or woman knows his name because they have not been born again. Only himself knows. That's why... Uh, and his name is called the Word, the Logos of God, the Debar of God, people. Now, as we've talked for many months, uh, several years, about the Spirit or the testimony, the witness, which is the Spirit, the prophecy. Uh, now, I'm going to hit on a few things today uh, and... One, uh, at the end, I, I do want to talk a little bit about the dietary laws. As believers in Messiah, as being born again, and, uh, and being part of the renewed covenant in Messiah, as a believer, does it profit us anything to follow the dietary laws? Now, I, I'm going to kind of lay a little bit of groundwork here. I did not, what I am not saying 
for all the Hebrew, uh, anybody in the Hebrew movement or that, that might view this video. Uh, I want to I want to outline it and what I am saying or what I'm going to show according to Scripture. I am not saying that the dietary laws that were given to Israel are not healthy for human beings uh, that are not a better way to eat as far as your health, as far as the flesh is concerned. But you got to remember, flesh and blood is not going to enter the kingdom. So now you got to remember the body of Christ is a heavenly body. The greater second exodus is coming is when Christ saves the 12 tribes. They are still literally, uh, they are mortal beings. We will be changed a moment between you and I at the last trump, the last day. We'll be glorified. We'll, be, we'll see him as he is, as in a glorified body. So there again, uh, understand now. So what I'm going to show in Scripture is, we're, in other words, there's a lot of teaching on uh, what Christians need to come to understand that they need to eat the unclean meats. Oh, excuse me, the clean meats. In other words, know what's unclean and what's clean. That was given to Israel, the dietary laws, in other words. So we got to be real careful as teachers. I'm a teacher, or as uh, those that uh, preach the gospel, or pastors, we got to be careful uh, there again not to uh, use the dietary laws as saying, hey, now you're a Christian, now you're a believer, now you need to go to the, diet, the Jewish dietary laws and uh, because that's, that, that's also uh, the God wants you to do that or God commands or uh, it's more profitable for you with God or with the Spirit to do that. Well, I'm going to show you in the scripture what a lot of people don't see or they haven't taught. So I will bring a few of those verses uh, to you here. Now, one other thing before we get started here in this morning's lesson. This is according to the Gregorian calendar where it started in 2020, a new year. Now, according to God's calendar, which I follow according to the Enoch calendar, our new year will not begin until uh, around the 20th, 19th of March, uh, according to the Enoch calendar, on the last day of the year will be the spring equinox, and then that first day of the year will be the day following that, which is always on Wednesday. So, but, be as it may, I want to say this. As I, if you go back and look at the videos in the years past, I will, I will say this according to Scripture. Uh, everything is according to the Word, according to the Scripture. But there's, you know, every year we go into this, uh, you have all these uh, so-called preachers on, a, on YouTube or social media that, well, could this be the year of the rapture? Uh, every year. Uh, if you go back and look at the past, just go back year after year uh, going back uh, for the last even as long as YouTube's been up there every year. Well, this could be it. The rapture's going to happen. The, see, anybody that teaches, could this be the year, then uh, they are really in a, in misleading because I, I will say this, as I've said it in years uh, past, not because I'm taking an opposite view of these people, just to be horrendous, so to speak, or to be uh, admonishing them or being uh, hard to get along with or whatever you might want to say. A lot of people think because I admonish or abuse some of these people because they're not teaching the truth. But I would say this according to the Scripture, there will be no first. It's not rapture. First has to come the resurrection, people. All these people, that say, well, will there be a rapture in 2020? Well, worse, the resurrection and then the rapture. That's according to the Word. 
Now, a lot of a lot of them, when you pin these people down, they'll say, oh, I, meant, I mean that. I mean, yeah, resurrection, and then we're raptured, caught up to meet him in the, in the clouds, in the air there. Well, you need to say what the Word says. Because when you see anybody headlining, well, I believe in the rapture, or I think the rapture is going to happen, or the rapture is going to be seven years before the tribulation, or mid-trib, or whatever their uh, theology is there, but there has to be a resurrection, people, before the rapture. So let's get things in order. There will be no, according to the Word of God, there will be no resurrection rapture in the year 2020. So it's, it's not going to happen because according to the Word of God. Now you say, well, Larry, what, what do you mean? Well, Christ has told us that when we're going to be resurrected, you have to be a resurrection, people, before there's a rapture. And he said, all those who are doing the will of the Father, he said, I will raise you up again in the last day. And Paul reveals in the at the at or in the last trump when that seventh, not the seventh, but when the last trump sounds, that's when you'll be changed a moment twinkling an eye. So uh, that's when the resurrection rapture will take place, and that is the last day, people. On according to God's calendar, that's the last day of the end of the age. See, that's when the last day is. Uh, now, according to the book of Revelation, the two witnesses have to prophesy for the three and a half years, and once they are killed by the beast, the false prophet, three and a half days later, they lie dead, three and a half days later, God's Spirit, the Ruach, brings in. They stand up or called up in the clouds there. And then you, that's the, that is on the last day. And then about six hours later, we will be resurrected at the last day in the last trump. And that's when the trumpet always sounds beginning of new months. I've talked to you about that many hours. For those that have never listened to that, uh, you can find that video there. So there will be no resurrection rapture in 2020 because we are not at the last day yet and the two witnesses have not stood up to prophesy yet. I've told you that many, many times. Okay, so hopefully uh, for those that uh, are seeking the truth to understand and, and rightly divide the word, follow what our Savior, the Messiah, taught. Don't listen to men, because the first sign he said, take heed. That is an imperative mood in the Greek. We're commanded to take heed that no man or woman deceive you. That's the first sign he give after the temple being destroyed. Take heed no man deceive you, for they will come in my name. He said they will come in my name and say, I am the Christ, and deceive many by what they teach. It says that's what he says. But that's not what he says. Uh, God, he is uh, the word made flesh, and we are studiers, and we have to profess him according to his word. The same way with the Logos of the Rhema, or in the Hebrew, the Debar. Okay, so uh, very important. Now, uh, I'm going to, uh, I want to go in, let's go into where, when we talk about prophecy, as I've talked to you uh, many hours, that probably the hardest chapter and, and verses to understand in the Renewed Covenant is when Paul is to teach the Corinthians, and in 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, when you have uh, languages and tongues, or glossa, which means uh foreign languages actually and so then we have uh, prophecy there so we have language tongues prophecy now I want to illustrate according to the Old Testament I'm going to show you 
you had prophets, see. Uh, the, the five-fold ministry of the, to build the uh, building or the edifying of the, uh, the church, uh, Paul reveals is uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Now, I've talked to you about the apostles. The apostles, there is no more apostles. Paul, Paul was the 13th, uh, born out of due season, and he was called and was an apostle, uh, a master teacher to the Gentiles. You had the 12 apostles, one was the devil, and then Thomas was uh, allotted as the 12th. And then Paul came along later. Then you had, uh, and those apostles, not all apostles, had the gifts. Uh, some had gifts of healing, some had gifts of miracles, some had both, and some had the gift of prophecy, prophesying. So very important there, um, those the apostles that were chosen by God, by Christ. There again, some of the apostles did not have miraculous gifts or gifts of healing or prophetic prophecies. Some did. Paul had all of those, uh, as I've said before. Now, but understanding once the Scripture was given to us, was canonized, the old, the new, and then the book of Revelation was penned, uh, we have to understand that we have all the Scripture. And when you are studying the Scripture, when you're uh, rightly dividing the Word, you, you see as Paul comes to his end of his ministry, he talks about, the testimony of Messiah or the witness, same Greek word, uh, though that is confirmed in the believer, then you don't like anything and there's no other gift coming. Now that word no other, uh, no there is the same context as what I just showed you in Revelation 19.13 that no man, woman knows his name. They're not born again. The world does not know his name. He is the word of God. So only the believer understands that because that's what we confess according to his word. Uh, now, so what I'm trying to, what you've got to come to understand is for the body, when Christ said, I will build my body, that's the same word as edification or edifying uh, it's the same Greek word. And when Paul says, the but prophecy edifies the church. Well, the ecclesias, that's the same word Christ used. Now, when Christ said, I will build my body and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it, we, we didn't know how he was going to build his body. Uh, he chose his 12 apostles. That was uh, who he chose. They were the foundation, of course. They were the apostles, of course, and he chose Paul out of due season. All right, now, it's very important that we come to understand now as we move in, because we have the words to rightly divide, to check uh, weights and balances there according to the word. Uh, uh, when Paul says now, according to the Greek text, the but prophecy edifies the ecclesia, the church. Okay, so the so now now so when we see what edifies the church, that's what builds the church, the body. Well see you can go back to when Christ told the apostles, I'll build my body and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Well, you can mentally rightly divide the Word of God. You can uh, mentally understand because of the Holy Spirit, because you've been born of the Spirit, the Spirit's in you, because you believe Christ in the name of the Son of God, and we love one another. Those are the two commandments uh, which the renewed covenant stands on. So there's your birth, there's the Spirit. Now the Spirit reveals, because uh, when Paul is revealing this, 
by the Spirit to us, for us to rightly divide, as, it, as we go back to Matthew 16, then we can see that Christ says, hey, I will build. Well, how is he building his body? The prophecy, singular. Now, and of course, we, we've talked about this many hours. The prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. Remember, we got there's three that bear record in the earth. Christ came not by uh, water and blood, but by he came by water and blood. But he also was sealed by the Holy Spirit when John baptized him. So it's the Spirit which bears witness to the truth. Christ is the whole dose, the way, the truth, and the life. So uh, as, we, as we connect all these dots, people, if somebody talks about you doing truth, the one the scripture says, all those that do truth come to the light, doing truth is uh, believing in the name of the Son of God. You're born again and love one another. You keep his commandments. And now the testimony of Christ is in you, and that has to be confirmed so you confess it. You're a witness. Remember, God always says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses to confirm his word. The body of Christ is confirming the Messiah. That's why that's the first commandment. To believe in the name of the Son of God, you are born again and have the Spirit of God in you. Now, you have the Spirit. Now, watch. The testimony of Jesus is the Spirit that you have that comes from the Father and that spirit is the prophecy, and the prophecy is the witness of the testimony of Messiah. See? So there's three that bear witness that this is Messiah, that the Word was made flesh, a come into the world as, as a human water and blood, but then he is sealed by the Holy Spirit as doves entered him when John baptized him, and that's why. Uh, John the Baptist, Christ called as the greatest prophet that's ever been born from a, a woman's womb. How did he, how could that, because he was the prophet, the f forerunner, the uh, spirit of Elijah crying in the wilderness, make thy crooked way straight, uh, make the path straight for the coming of the day of the Lord, for Christ is coming. And so here, Christ, uh, John the Baptist, being the greatest prophet, is the one that revealed the Spirit of God from heaven entering in to the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. No other prophet. He, John the Baptist is the one that introduced Jesus Christ as the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world to the whole world through his eyewitness of that. And Christ calls him the greatest prophet. Well, I mean, we can understand why. Okay, so now, uh, so you say, well, Larry, okay, where I'm going with this, to put all this together, uh, for you to understand you are a believer in Christ, you've been born again, and you know the two commandments that we keep, and now uh, Revelation 17, uh, uh, 12, 17 says, And the, uh, the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with her seed, which is Christ's seed, which is us, that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Christ. That's New Testament, people. That's the renewed covenant. See, all right, now, so now let's, let's just back up to the old prophets there were prophecies in the Word of God, in the Tanakh, in the Torah. Uh, you had the uh, Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms. So let's go back and let, let's just let's look at how the Spirit of God with the prophet uh, Ezekiel. Let's take a look at this now. Ezekiel 37, 1. And the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord and sent me down the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and low, and very dry. And he said unto me, verse 3, 
Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord uh, God, thou knowest. And again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now, Ezekiel 37, 4. Let's go back into the apostolic. Let's look at the Greek text here in the Old Testament. And here it is. And he said unto me, Prophesy, the Greek word 4395, prophesy over these dry bones, over these bones, and you to say to them, O dry bones, hear the logos of the Lord. You see, thus says the Lord here in verse 5, the Lord to these dry, behold, I shall bring into you a spirit of life. Okay, now, why am I showing you this? Because this was the prophet Ezekiel that was given by the Spirit of God that he was to prophesy, and he's writing this scripture down. Okay, okay so now, this word prophesy in the Greek, when you run it through the New Testament, is I'll show you it's the same word. And, and the word logos, see, that's the word word. If I confess Christ as the Son of God, that's according to his word. See, okay, when we go to the renewed covenant now, okay, Ezekiel had this prophecy about the dry bones. Jeremiah had prophecies. Isaiah had prophecies. Some of them even uh, was contrament, uh, uh their commentaries or their prophecy also uh, would be uh, through Jeremiah uh, would talk about a prophecy. Uh, Zechariah talked about some of Jeremiah's prophecy. In other words, they could they could uh, relate to maybe the same prophecy. But they were given prophecies as being prophets. Now, under the renewed covenant, and Christ is going to build his body, but the thing that's unique here in the spiritual aspect of he building his and the kingdoms in us, the prophecy now being singular is the same prophecy. In other words, I, I, uh, Ezekiel had a prophecy, Jeremiah had prophecies, all the prophecies had different uh, prophecies, some from the for the southern kingdom, some for all of Israel, some for the northern kingdom. All right, now we are the body of Christ. Christ is head over our body. We are many members all baptized into one spirit. Now that one spirit is going to reveal the testimony of Christ and every believer. That's the edifying of the body of Christ. See, that's, that is your prophecy. But see, that prophecy is the same for me. It's the same for every member of the body, people. That's our witness of the Messiah, the Spirit, the prophecy. So hopefully, I'm, I hadn't come from this angle of the Old Testament, but I was wanting to bring this to, for those that might be having some problems with understanding this, because there again, now, what does that, what does that say? Oh, when Paul, if you understand that, when Paul says, that once the testimony of Jesus Christ is confirmed in you, you don't like anything. Remember, I've gone over that many hours, and the, guess what? There's no other gift coming. Now, the gift for the body of Christ, that Greek word gift means miraculous, uh, gratuity, all of that uh, word, uh, definition in the word, that word gift. There's other words for gifts that doesn't have the same definition. But now, understanding for the body of Christ, for those that believe, we've all been given that gift from our Father, which is eternal life. That is the gift of God that we believe in the Messiah. We have eternal life in Him. That's eternal life. That's the miraculous gift for every member of the body of Christ, whether 
uh, what, no matter what nationality, what race, what gender, whatever, uh, we're all members of the same body. That's why he poured out his spirit on all flesh. But that all flesh has to come under knowing that the teaching of the gospel, uh, whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, is that you hear the gospel and believe that Jesus, in the name of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and love one another. Those are the two commandments. That is charity, or that is L-O-V, love in the Greek or in the English, it's G25 or G26. It is not phileo love, which I've talked to you many hours about. So whenever you read the scripture and you run in, or rather Paul's used it, Peter's used it, John's used it, and you see the word L-O-V, you need to have you a strong number to tell you what uh, that means in the Greek text. It makes sure it's it's only used, the commandment love is only used in the Greek word G25 and 26. Uh, so that's, and when you see that, now if the word love is uh, phileo, yes, we do have phileo love. And we do phileo our brothers, I love them. But the commandments is what we walk in, uh, in loving one another. It's walking in the commandments of a king and his kingdom. That's the spiritual understanding of agape or agapo. Okay, so very, very important. So now, so hopefully we've learned this. The prophets of the Old Testament were given a spirit of prophecy by the Holy Spirit, and they prophesied that and wrote it down uh, to prophesy that and uh, when that would come to pass, or if they had, there's still those of the old prophets that's got prophecies that have not been fulfilled yet. Some have, some had. Now for the body of Christ, there again, once the testimony, you don't like it. So, and there's no other gift coming. So what does that mean? That means you will, according to the scripture, once the body, uh, the, the true gospel has been penned and being, uh, been wrote and being taught, uh, there is no other gift coming. In other words, I could not uh, preach the spirit, the prophecy to you, and then come right by, uh, behind and lay hands on you to be healed of cancer or agree with you by faith that you uh, are going to get a better job. Or you know, see, there's no other than that gift. Now, that's that's hard for people to accept because that's all it's taught out there. It's all it's been taught out there. But what you got to remember, if you're going to believe what the Messiah says, take heed, no man deceive you. I'm teaching according to what the word, what they taught according to the word. Paul could raise people from the dead. He healed people. He was bitten by poisonous snakes and lived, and he prophesied against the enemy. Uh, there again, as I said, that there's one guy, he told uh, that he would not see the sun for a year, and immediately he was blinded for a year. But Paul said, as the uh, scripture being fulfilled or wrote, at the end, he never went to miracles. He cut it off, people. He said, once the testimony is confirmed and you, you become a perfect or complete man. Now, that means you're not perfect like Christ, but it means you're complete because you don't have any more gifts coming and you don't like anything, people. And that's why I'm showing you. For every member of the body, this is the goal. And Paul teaches that. John teaches that. So it's very, very important that you understand uh, when we look at the prophets of the Old Testament, yes, uh, but see now, once you've been born again and believe the commandments, the scripture says now you have that testimony, the witness of Jesus in you. In other words, and I, let's go back and let me show you that real quick for those that, uh, let's go back to uh, 1 John 5. Uh, we got to go over this, people, for people to get a hold of this 
because this is uh, detrimental to your spiritual health. In other words, this does, uh, this is where eternal life is, not eternal life is not in the food laws. Uh, I'll show you that before we close. Okay, 1 John 5. Okay, right here. 1 John 5. Uh, we see that uh, the testimony, the spirit, the water, and the blood here. The testimony concerning the uh, Son. This is he that came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but water and blood. Because he was made... Uh, into the image of a man. So he had water and blood here. But look what he says. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness because the Spirit is the truth. Okay, so the Spirit is the truth. Now, the, the Spirit is God, people. God is the Spirit. He is Spirit. Capital S P I R T. So he bared witness because the Spirit is the truth. Now, this witness took place right here, people. This witness took place in the first chapter of John when the Word was made flesh in the beginning. Now, let's go down to where the God, the Spirit, bared record of this. Right here, John says at 120, the, the next day Jesus coming to him, behold the Lamb of God, take away. And this is him I said, after me cometh which is preferred before me. And I knew him not, that he should be manifest to Israel, therefore am I baptized with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw, there it is, people, I saw the Spirit. Okay, I saw the Spirit, people, very important here. I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode up epi here, or this is a, this word here, epi means a superimposement position on him. And I knew him not, but he sent me to baptize with water. The same said to me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him the same he which will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So John the Baptist being called the greatest, or the immerser called the greatest prophet ever, we can because he bare record of the Spirit from heaven, the Spirit of God descending on Christ. Okay, let's go back to John 5, and, and right here it is. It's, John is relaying this to you. Uh, right here. The testimony of the Son. So Christ was by, uh, by the water and blood, and the Spirit witnessed because the Spirit is the truth. Now that's the three that bear record in the earth. Now, for the new covenant people to come into being, Christ had to finish the work of the Father, the Spirit. He had to go to the tree and die and be crucified, and the soldier had to appear his side for the water and the blood to be poured out for the remission of sins of many. That's when he gave the, we got the Passover coming up. When we rehearse Passover according to the New Covenant, not according to the Torah. So we got that coming because Christ said, hey, you got to eat this bread. This is my body, drank this blood. This is, a, uh, this is the blood that I will pour out for many. This And my blood is the New Covenant. And of course, that covenant was to fulfill Abraham's covenant. Because, see, Abraham was a man, and God created his son into the son of man. And so man's covenant, God made a man's covenant with Abraham, and guess who the man was? The man Christ Jesus. He fulfilled the covenant that was promised to Abraham. And that's why uh, that covenant then was for Israel to renew the house of Israel and the house of Judah. But guess what? The house of Judah and the house of Israel had to be rebirth, born again, as he told Nicodemus. Or you cannot enter into the kingdom. And of course, guess what? They have not been born again. And they will not be born again until they see the sign of the Son of Man in heaven 
right before he comes in the clouds of glory uh, and great power, and that's when they will mourn for the one they pierced. And that will not be until the day of the Lord. That will not be. He will save Israel. And that nation will be born again. And one day when he sits his feet on the Mount of Olives and gathers those, uh, the house of Judah and the house of Israel. And they will not be jealous one of another again. It's all in the right in 37th chapter of Ezekiel when you go further. That there will be one uh, shepherd and one nation. Be no more two nations. But that has to do with Israel. That has not to do with the body of Christ, people. For you are the body of Christ, and, and Ezekiel is prophesying that. Now, the our prophecy, do we have a prophecy? Yes, everybody has the same prophecy, singular. And that's the testimony of Messiah, which is the spirit, the prophecy. And there again, if I, if I was to give you a, a, a quiz, all those who are listening to uh, these videos are listening to me now. Uh, if you, according to the word of God, if you believe in the name of the Son of God, you have been birthed of the Spirit. You have the Spirit in you. That's what the Scripture says. That's the, we go by what the Scripture says, not by man's altar calls, or all the prayers and all that. We go by hearing the word of God and believing. Now, if you believe that you, the second commandment you're born of is love one another, which is no new commandment, Christ said, that's out of the Torah, love your neighbors yourself, but he did say. But I say unto you now, though, if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. So now, now we got a spiritual, you can be a spiritual murderer by hating your brother. It's talking about your brother being in Messiah, you see. Okay, so the body of Christ is being built. It's being built by the prophecy. If first you believe, you're born again, and then that witness is confirmed in here. Now look what John says right here. So, so the order, there's three in heaven, there's three in earth. The, the witness in the earth is this Christ received the Spirit, and of course he had water and blood like humans, and then when he went to the cross and died, that water and blood, the Spirit ascended back to where it came, and then the water and blood was poured out for the sins, for those who believe. That's where eternal life. Now look, notice, if we receive the witness of men, it's the witness of the Spirit of God is greater. That You're not born by this witness of man, uh, John, we've got that. But the witness of the Spirit of God is greater, for this is the witness. Here is the witness testimony of the Spirit which he has testified of his son. He that, now here it is, he that believeth on the son of God, you possess the witness in yourself, in himself. Now we know he that believeth on the son of God has been born again, people, because that's the first commandment. The second commandment is to love one another. Now, you have the witness when you've been born again. You believe that the Son of God, you have the witness in himself or yourself. Now, here's the thing, people. That witness in you or in me by the studying of the Scripture of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that's in us, that if we are led by the Spirit, which he says, all those that are led by the Spirit reap eonian life, eternal life. Now, being led by the Spirit, the Spirit then is what prophesies the testimony of Jesus because that's your witness. It's in you. I hope y'all are getting a hold of this. So now, when Christ talks about denying his words, if you deny me, you're denying his words. In other words, because he is the word made flesh. So he said, if you deny me, I'll deny you before the Father. Well, in other words, if you deny, if you say you are a believer in the Messiah, that testimony, that witness is going to come out of your mouth. It will be confirmed in you. Now, that's when you become a complete 
or a teleos complete man or woman, see. So the, it's very important. Now, there's many people out there, I do believe, when you do believe what we've just talked about, you have been born again. Now you are a babe in Christ. But when Paul is talking to the Corinthians, and, he, and he's saying this is confirmed, then when you get to the third chapter of 1 Corinthians, he's got a great problem because they're still envious like men. They're still backbite. They're still doing all things like, like they was in Adam in the flesh before they become a believer in Messiah. Because he said, now I can't even speak to you as a testimony being confirmed in you because y'all are envious of each other. Y'all are uh, causing all kind of uh, problems in the, the body here because of your carnality, he said. He said, now I can't even speak to you as spiritual men. See, as spiritual, comparing spiritual with spiritual. Why? Because the carnal man cannot understand, discern the things of spirit. They're foolishness. See? So you got to follow Paul's teaching all the way through. So even though he reveals, you don't like anything in the first chapter of Corinthians to some of those believers. But in about a three-week period later, once he's hearing what's going on, he comes back and said, hey, you're still on the milk. He said, I can't even speak to you as you've been prophesying because you can't have the witness of Christ. You can't be following the commandments if you're yet carnal. There hasn't been a change. Or if you're going back to the carnality of, of that. See, So very important that we understand that. So there again, now, now what I want to do is uh, when Ezekiel, the same word, he prophesied to the dry bones. And of course, he, by the word of God, he said, you know, he's talking to the word. He said, you know, by your word, you know all things. Well, yeah, but we got the word of God too, see. The renewed covenant is an extension of uh, renewing the covenant of the house of Israel according to the word, see. Okay, so now for us to be a believer and been born again, uh, keeping his commandments, and have the testimony of Christ, which is what? The spirit, the prophecy, see. It's your spirit that is prophesying. You've been, you got to, People do not uh, relate. They think because they've been born again, they're just trying to be a better person. No, you're a new creature now. You're a new uh, creation in Christ. So now your life is Christ. Old things passing away in Adam. All things died in Adam. All things are coming being made alive and coming to being in Christ. Well, if you're made alive in Christ, You've been born again, and you believe that he is the son of that. All, all in Adam die, all in Christ made alive. How are you made alive in Christ? The Spirit makes you alive in Christ once you hear and believe. Now you've been made alive in Christ. Now we got to grow up in Christ. See? That's why Paul said that when there's divisions in the churches. I mean, we know the mystery of iniquity is almost full-blown now. Last three and a half years, it will be full-blown. But Christ said the mystery of iniquity is already, it's going to increase. Paul says the mystery of iniquity is already here. And Christ said the love of many will wax cold. Well, if you understand what that word love is, what's he saying? What's he saying to me as a believer, to you as a believer? He's saying as we get closer to the end, he said, the love of the commandments of the New Testament will grow colder and wax colder and colder. That's what he's talking about. Not, not phileo, he's talking about commandment love. This is exactly what he's talking about. The love of many will wax colder and colder is this. The love of many that know and keep his commandments is to believe in the Son of God and love one another will wax colder because of all of the iniquity. That's exactly what's happened, people. 
If you turn on any of the big church channels, if they're preaching about Israel, or they either preaching that give to Israel, do this for Israel, because God will bless you and your finances, and all these so-called rabbis that are on there that are pushing, uh, getting a, all uh, send money for this to get this done, for that to done, and according to the Word of God, Israel will be born again when Christ gets here. But yet, look at all of the iniquity. Look at the iniquity in the church because there's no teaching of the commandments in the ecclesia. There's no building of the ecclesia by the prophecy uh, or the testimony. Uh, there's no teaching of that. It's all that if, if you send in your gift, God will bless you. If you make it a bigger gift, you can back up your truck and get more money. If you do, because what did Christ say? Because iniquity, that's loneliness, people. Because iniquity abound, the commandments of the New Testament would wax colder. And of course, if the commandments wax colder, there is no testimony. See, it's, and there again, what did, Christ, what did the book of Revelation say? Don't seal up the prophecy of this book. And he says, if you add to it, I'm going to add the plagues. If you cut it off, You'll be taken out of the book of life. I just, that's what his word says. So there again. Now let, let me let's go real quick here, and uh, uh, this is so understanding here. If you believe in the Son, you have the witness. Now the Spirit and the studying by the Holy Spirit will confirm that witness, and you will be understand that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Well, your temple, the Holy Spirit, has the prophecy, the Spirit, the prophecy, the testimony of Christ. And all of the body of Christ has to be edified, people, in that teaching. See, that's what builds up the body. Nothing else builds the body. Nothing according to the Torah, the, uh, any of those things, uh, and I'm going to especially talk about the food laws here in just a minute, so very important that you understand that. Now, so right here. Now, if you do not believe or have the testimony or that testimony confirmed, you've made God out to be a liar, people. You've made the Spirit of God a liar because you do not believe in the record, the witness that God gave of His Son. And this is so, so very important. Test yourself here, people. Uh, if you lined up a hundred so-called believers in Messiah, could those hundred believers, according to the Word of God, could they teach, the, according to the Word of God, could they take you to the Scripture according to the Word which says of the Father, the Spirit, witnessing His Son in the earth, that He would not only came by water and blood, but the Spirit was sent from heaven and entered to Him as John was fixing to baptize Him, and that the Spirit of God bared record in the earth that this is my Son. Do you have those scriptures in your mind? Do you know where to go? to teach those scriptures? Do you have that? I mean, this is according to the word. You have to know this. Do you realize when John the blood was standing at the foot of the tree, he pinned and said that you believe when that soldier pierced his side and the water and the blood poured out, that started the new creation for all those that believe entered into the blood covenant, entered into Christ, coming to being in the blood and your sins have been removed. Do you, do you know where to go to take those, to the, to that scripture? Do you know where to find that in that scripture, people? Because, see, you're being conformed to the image of the Son. The image of the Son is the Word of God. You're being conformed to the Word, people. That Word is in you. If the Spirit is in you, the Spirit is the Word. The Spirit is the truth. For you to do truth and come to the light, you've got to confess his word. You've got to know what his word says. Okay, so right here, 
so it's either you believe and you have the witness or you don't believe and you've made the Spirit of God a liar. Okay. All right. Now, so when we're looking at prophecy here, and I'm going to get, if when we started here in Ezekiel, well, well, when we come to the same word in the Greek, prophecy right here is 4395. So when we, and I've talked to you about this, this is probably the hardest chapter of verses uh, in Scripture, uh, what Paul's saying in 1 Corinthians 14, that has to do with uh, languages and prophecy here. Because people think this has to do with tongues speaking in an unknown language or heavenly language. Okay, now, so look at what Paul says here. Now, you got to remember, this is 1 Corinthians 14. If you go to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, Paul's going to reveal the testimony of Jesus, and you don't like anything, and there's no other gift coming. Okay, so now, when we get here, Notice what Paul says in the topic being prophecy and languages or tongues. What does Paul say? Follow after charity. Now there again, people, automatically, when you see charity, this is commandments. Now, when you see the, now the best translation there to keep everything kosher, so to speak, is love. Now let me show you right here. Here is uh, the American Standard. Follow after love. That's a better. That word is G26. The King James uses charity, but it's still the same Greek word. See, if you go to the Young's translation, I think, yeah, pursue love. Uh, if you go to the Apostolic Greek, it says pursue love. It doesn't change. You see, when you get to the King James, though, the King James is going to throw charity in there, right here. There's charity. But remember, this word here is the same word that's translated love in most of your texts. So don't get confused. Well, the, uh, follow that. Well, charity, that's being good to everybody. No. Charity, love is means. You follow, this is a command actually. Uh, follow after 1377 uh, is an imperative move, people. As a believer, I am commanded to follow after the two commandments to believe in the Son of God and love one another. That is command. Now, when we fall short of that, we got a mediator. The Son of Man or Christ Jesus is our mediator, is our high priest. But understanding what I know what Paul's saying, follow after the commandments. We're commanded to follow the commandments. Okay, and those are the two commandments for the renewed covenant. Okay, now... Now, once that, once you follow, of course, Paul don't say it here, but we know it according to the word. You've been born again, so if you, being born again, you've got to keep following after the commandments uh, because you're a new creature. You've been born again. You know you're entering the kingdom, a spiritual kingdom. So now, what's the next thing he says? He says, and desire spiritual but it, but gifts is not this right here is not in the text people this is they want to teach and desire spiritual gifts desire uh knowledge words of knowledge prophesying healing miracles their desire spiritual is talking about uh spiritual in other words uh you can only compare spiritual with spiritual. Not spiritual gifts of healing and of miracles. Spiritual is spiritual. You've got to be able to compare. Spiritual is spiritual. You can't compare spiritual with carnality. Carnality with the spirit. See, that's what Paul's talking about. He's not talking about, they, they put that in there. That's not in the text. And all you got to do is see Paul's teaching on uh, the carnal man cannot receive the things of God, the spiritual things of God. They're foolishness. So you, what are you? You follow the commandments, and you compare spiritual with spiritual, and then look what he says next. But I had rather. Rather is balloon is in a greater degree. So this is very important, of course. This is first. 
and then to compare the spiritual blessings with the spiritual blessings. But I'd rather that you prophesy. Okay, now this prophesy here, people, the same word. Now, Ezekiel prophesied the dry bones as a prophecy. But now this prophecy here, Paul is going to reveal this prophecy is singular and it's only for the body of Christ, the believer. And that's what edifies the church. So let's see what he says. For he that speaketh in an unknown, unknown means unknown language. That's not, but in a tongue, that's language. If I, if I speak in a different language than English, most people are not going uh, to understand me, but I will speak to God. He knows all languages. Now look what it says, for no man, now here again, this is old dice. For no man, woman, none, anybody, man, woman, none. This is when Paul uses the same word that you don't like anything and there's no other spiritual gift coming. No man, woman is going to have any other spiritual gift once the testimony has been confirmed. For no man understand woman, how be it, in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Now, okay, now what does that mean? There again, I do not know any foreign languages. If I hear somebody speak in any foreign language, I do not understand, and they're in the, their spirit, little spirit here, we all have a spirit, they're speaking a foreign language, if I don't know their foreign language, it's all mystery to me. They speak or teach in mysteries to me. See, all right, first, verse 3. But he that prophesied speaketh unto men to the edification, there it is, the building, exhortation, and comfort. All right, he that prophesied. Now, which was the greater, Paul said? Uh, love, follow after love, compare spiritual to spiritual, but uh, the greater is that you know and prophesy the prophecy being singular. Now there again, as, as Paul is going to reveal here, he that prophesies speaking of men through the edification and exhortation and comfort of the body. Now look what he says, 14.4. He that speaketh in an unknown language edifies himself. Now again, if I'm speaking... If I'm speaking to y'all right now, and y'all happen to tune me in, y'all know me, and I'm speaking, uh, all of a sudden right now, I start speaking in Chinese. Probably uh, whoever's listening on the other end, it would be impossible that it couldn't be uh, a, a Chinese person in America listening to this and, and knows both languages. But as a whole, y'all would think, there's no. I'm only edifying myself by this truth and God, he understands. But to you that don't understand Chinese, it'd be a, it, it would be no profit or no benefit to you that even though I would be prophesying in Chinese here, the prophecy, the spirit, the prophecy of Chinese, but to you, uh, if you don't know Chinese, uh, then it would be no benefit. That's what Paul's saying. You had a bunch of languages in Corinth there. That was a hub. He that speaketh in a tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesied edified the church. Now this is so important. What is Paul saying here, people? He that prophesied edifies, that's the building up of the church, the ecclesia, the body. Okay, now when you, there again, when you go to the Greek text, you're going to see the definite article, but is conjunction, he that prophesied. What's left out in the King James people is the. I've showed you this, so let's, let's look at the text. This, this is a huge, uh, very huge nugget for understanding what Paul actually said. I've got it highlighted in yellow here. See, here is the definite article, the. It's left out in the translation of the English. What's in the English, it starts right here. But this is where, this is in the translation of the, 
of the King James is right here. The conjunction but. All right, let's, let's look at it here. All right, right here. See, it, uh, the King James puts, brings it in here. But prophesy, all right, let's go back to King James. I'll show you real quick. Watch. All right, right here. He that speaketh in an unknown language uh, edifies only himself. But, there's that word, but. He that prophesied, but he that prophesied. But, in the Greek text, it's the but prophesied. It's the definite article here is right here. The, oh, no, let me get the first four right here. Right here. The definite article, but prophesy, church edifies. Okay, right here. I'm teaching. I'm teaching whoever's listening out there. According to the word, the order, you've been born again, have the commandments, now the witness is in you. Now for that witness, the testimony be confirmed in you, that's confirmed in you by the Spirit. Remember, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're the temple of God. You have the Spirit of God in you once you were born again. Okay, now, so what to you being part of the body? I'm part of the body. I'm a teacher. So I'm teaching you those people that are part of the body. What am I teaching to you? That it is the but prophecy singular that edifies you, edifies me, edifies the church. Think about what Paul's saying here, people. It's not a, a an Old Testament prophet like Ezekiel or Jeremiah. We're we're all members of the same body. We all have what has to be edified in my temple of the Holy Spirit, and if I in your temple of the Holy Spirit is the prophecy. And that's the testimony of Christ coming out of your mouth, which is the spirit, the prophecy. Now you don't like anything. And you've got to endure that to the end. No matter what kind of miracles are coming, no matter what Satan is going to throw out here with wondrous works and lying uh, wonders of miracles, because the people did not love the truth. I'm giving you the truth. They didn't love that. That's why they've added to the truth. See, that faith was not good enough. We all have the measure in the body. The measure is definite article, people. Now, if if I if the if there was if if the uh, miracles and healings and prophecies were still contingent as what they preach out there then everything Paul's saying is obsolete. In other words, you can't believe anything he's saying because he is telling you that the prophecy now is, once that's edified in you, that has to be edified in the body, every member of the body. That's our goal, see. That's why it's only for the believer. The prophecy is only for the believer in Messiah because that's what edifies the church. Now, right here, the prophecy is not uh, more miracles coming, more healings coming, more prosperity coming, more all that stuff coming. That's not it. The prophecy is the testimony, and that is the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That's the miracle. So if somebody says to you, well, I still believe Christ heals and does miracles, well, the true miracle is for you to be born again to enter the kingdom. And that's why there's no like once that testimony of the Spirit, the prophecy is confirmed in you, then you've got to endure that. You've got to teach that. And that has to be taught to every new member of the body of Christ because that will edify them. Now, Paul says, if you build up on this foundation any other way, gold, silver, uh, wood, hay, stubble, and if you look all those words up in the Hebrew, you'll find out that it has to do with the, the things of the old tabernacle. You are now the temple, not the temple made with hands. 
So that everything you look there, look it up in the New Old Testament, and that's the things that were represented in the tent or the tabernacle that are eventually Solomon's temple. And that's what they're wanting to build, another temple over there. So they can bring all these things, and that's an abomination, people. You are the temple of God, see. Okay, now, right here, so when we see uh, in 14.5, and I'm going to move on, uh, 14.5, now look what Paul said. I would that you all speak with languages. Now, this is not talking about what they say is tongues, speaking tongues, people. This is speaking with glossal languages. Now, well, why? Because, hey, if I knew more languages, I could speak to people in those languages to teach them the Word of God, to teach them the testimony, see. But I do not know any of these languages, so I cannot teach them. Now, Paul said, if I was, he said, Larry, I'd rather you, I would rather you have more languages so you could preach the gospel to more people. Not talking about the, the tongue language that they uh, teach out there, people. So, but look what he says next. But now, I would that you all had uh, the gift of, of more languages that I that you understood. But there's the same word, rather balloon, greater degree that you prophesy, for greater the reason. For greater is he that prophesy, this is the prophecy, singular, than he that speaketh with different languages, except he interpret that the ecclesia may receive the edifying. In other words, if he speaks with languages, that there, nobody understands, there has to be an interpreter so that those believers will be edified by what? The prophecy. That you prophesy. The prophecy here. See? And it's amazing. This is what it's talking about here. So, uh, let me highlight that. So, so the prophecy, so Paul keeps going. The prophecy is what edifies the church. Uh, so when uh, I'm going to go back over 1 Corinthians 14 later because this is such a hard chapter to understand there's twists and turns in there, but but when you come to see what Paul is, everything he's relating to here, and this is why when he gets down here to 22, uh, right here, wherefore languages are a sign not to them that believe. Languages here were not to the believer. Uh, it was to them that believed not. Now there again, when you go back to Isaiah uh, 28, I believe, is where you find this word is taken from. But when the time of Pentecost, the fullness of time of Pentecost come, you had these uh, uh, Judeans or these Galileans speaking in all these different dialects and languages for all these people that come in to keep the feast of Pentecost. But they were not believers, people. None of them were believers. So God done this miraculous, uh, uh, miraculous sign where they could speak to all of these uh, different dialects and glosses, and yet they, they were given this gift to speak to them in their own language. But it was not for a believer, it was for them that believed not. Now, notice what he's saying. But prophesying is not for them believe not, but is for them what believe. So the prophecy, now there again, let's, let me just show you to be consistent with the text. You see, but prophesying there, but notice what it says here. Right here in yellow. The, the but prophesy is not for the infidel, the unbeliever, but is for the believer. Definite article, the body, the ecclesia, the believer. 
That's what the prophecy. But you see right here, people, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to redo this. I'm going to show you. That right there is, um, uh, this is how amazing. you got to look at this, and that's why I'm showing it to you. I'm not making this up. All right, there it is. Exactly, definite article, the conjunction, but, and there's some prophecy. That's in the nominative singular uh, feminine. It's a noun. Now, this is verse 22. All right, before we move on to the food laws, we'll hear. I'm going to go right back up to verse 5, 4, 4 and 5. So see, he's right back up there where we just come from. And let me show you something. Okay. All right, here we are, right here. No matter what you, wherever you want to, uh, verse 4, right here. There it is. The but prophecy church edifies. That is exactly uh, right here. Uh, the but prophecy is uh, is right here. Yellow and then the orange and the yellow. The but prophecy church, that's the body, that's the ecclesia, that's the believer, builds up, edifies. And, and Paul uses the same thing in 22nd verse. Right here is the same three words, the but prophecy. And what does that do? That's for the believer only. That's what edifies the church, the believer. You see how important that is, people? It's very, very, very important. Okay, so now... Okay, now what we're going to do here before we close, I told you I want to talk to you a little bit about what the food laws, are they a benefit? Are they a profit? Well, let's see what Paul says. And let's go back to Corinthians and let's look at the 8th chapter here. <clears throat> right here. Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. But knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifies. Now, remember charity, that's love, that's the commandments. See, as Paul is not the commandments here. Uh, now, there again, if you're looking to apostolic, you're going to see love here. Love, not charity, that's the translation. All I'm saying to you is, people, charity and love is uh, the same word in the Greek, no matter how it's transliterated in English. It's the same word. So now, uh, even the American Standard uses love here. Love edifies right here. Love edifies. The King James, I don't know why they do this, and if you don't study that, you're going to think charity is something different. No, it's the same thing. It's the same Greek word. So, all right. It's the commandments that edify, and see, the commandments edify the church because walking in the commandments, you have the witness, the testimony, the prophecy, which is the building up of the church. If any man think he knoweth anything, knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know, Paul says. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. Now, what is this? What does Paul mean here? If any man or love, G25, God, the same is known of him. According to the word of God, how do we know the children of God or any man or woman that loves God is they keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. That's G25. That's, uh, now, remember, I did a video on G25, which G26 comes from G25, but G25 comes from the Hebrew word that means to breathe after. So we are breathing after his commandments and we're not breathing after the things of the world. That's all that's in the world, see, is lust and pride and evil. That's all that's in the world. But in his commandments is holiness, is pureness, is oneness. So there again, 
and you have the nine fruits of the Spirit for those that are born again. And the very first fruit of the Spirit is agape, or love, and that's walking after his commandments. That's the first thing taught to us. See, so very important. So right when you read Paul, is here the ones that love God. If you love God, you're keeping his command. It has nothing to do, oh, I love Jesus. I love God. If you love him, then do what he says. Walk after his commandments, and the testimony, the prophecy, the Spirit will be confirmed in you because you have the Spirit of God in you. Okay, right here. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things or sacrifice of idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world. And but there is none other, there's only one God, one spirit. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many. Abraham was Sarah called Abraham Lord, and Moses was called a God, there's many gods and lords, so to speak, but to us there is but one spirit or God the Father, of whom are all things. And we are in him, Paul says. We are in his spirit. And one Lord Jesus Christ by whom all things, and we are through him, dia, channel, through him. Verse 7, I bet there is not in every man that knowledge. How be it there is not in every man that knowledge. For some with conscience of the idol unto this hour, eat as their conscience being weak is defiled. All right, now, now verse 8, people. But meat, now the word meat here in the Greek is broma. It comes from 977, and it means especially ceremonial articles allowed or forbidden by the Jewish law meat victuals. So this has to do with the dietary laws here, this word, this Greek word. So, but meat commended us not to God. So the victuals did not commend us to God, for neither, was it say, if we eat, are we the better? Now, do y'all see what Paul's saying? So if we eat or continue in them, does it make us Commend us to God, are we better for that, he says. Uh, neither, he says, we are better. Neither, if we eat not, are we the worse. Okay, now right here. Are we the worst? Okay. Guess what this word is, people? This is the word lack. In other words, fall short or become. So what is Paul saying? Whether you, does it uh, commend you to God by being uh, eaten on the, uh, the uh, meat laws? It does not, it, reason for it, neither if we eat are we better, Paul says. So if you're going by the meat laws out there, it does not command, it don't make you any better. Neither if we don't eat, are we the worse. So if we don't eat, are we worse? Or if y'all that do eat according to the law, are you better? Paul says neither. It's like circumcision, uncircumcision. But now look what he says next. Now I want to show you. Now remember, this word like. You remember when I talked to you about the young Jew, the rich young Jew come to Christ and say, hey, I've kept all of my commandments from the youth up to now, talking about the love of thy neighbor. And, and he said, what do I like? And yet, what do I like, Christ? And he said, if you want to be complete, come and follow me. Now, he didn't say if you want to be complete, you got to do the food laws, and you got to do this, you got to do these, you got to do all this uh, other uh, ceremonial stuff. Now, for you people out there that's been watching me for a long time or know, I do follow the divine days through the holidays, but I worship in spirit and truth, not according to the Torah, people. I don't bring anything according to the Torah for any of the holidays because you're a new creature walking in liberty, walking in newness of life. 
you are unleavened, so why would I keep uh, get the unleavened out of my house uh, for a week to do that uh, rehearsal as the Jews did? The Jews did not receive the New Covenant people as a whole. So uh, we're walking according to the renewed covenant. So I do follow the holidays, and I do follow the Sabbath, not according to the Torah. It's impossible to keep the Sabbath according to the Torah. They couldn't. It's, but I do worship on that day, spirit and truth. See, so uh, it's the same, but I do not do it according to most of the way these people out here do and go out and build stuff and, and, and try to bring back uh, the old ways of the Torah Keep it the Feast of Tabernacles or, or Passover or Pentecost. See? All right, so uh, y'all understand that because I do follow the whole, because they are prophetic as far as uh, of, uh, the Word of God. I mean, till all things been written in the Torah, the prophets and some, till all things been fulfilled by Him, uh, so He hadn't done away with it. But we're a new creature in Christ, people. We must worship the Father. And spirit and truth. Okay, so right here, uh, so right, well, so look what Paul's saying. Now, what is he saying to you, believer? But take heed, least by any means, that this liberty of yours come into being a stumbling block to them that are weak. See? Lotus. For if any man see thee that has knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to God?